27 minutes to post time now for the Preakness. The weather has just become as perfect as it's been all day here. And right now, Chick Anderson is on the jockey terrace. Chick? Well, here comes the man who has a big job today. This is Lafitte Pinkai Jr. Lafitte, you had a trip in the Derby that wasn't perfect, but your horse ran a big race. Do you feel like you can expect the same effort today? Oh, yes, I do. I am very confident in my horse. I think he's going to run a terrific race. Uh, I really like him today, and uh, I'll be disappointed if he don't win. Lafitte, uh, what are your feelings about the race and the racetrack? Do you feel like you have to ride a different race here than you did in Louisville? Well, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm going to try to play by ear, you know. If I break good, I lay close to the pace. If you don't, well, I lay back, you know. I, I just going to play by ear. Well, have a very good trip. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And now here is Ron Turcott. And Ron is the man with the enviable position of being on Secretariat today. Secretariat was a magnificent horse in the Kentucky Derby. I don't know whether he can improve on that or not, Ronnie. Uh, how do you feel? Well, I just hope you're on the same race. You don't need to improve. That was a big race. Uh, he's training real good, coming up to it real good. Ron, uh, the same question that I asked Lafitte. You have a little bit of a different racetrack here, a different surface. The turns are a bit different. Do you feel you have to ride a different sort of race or not? Well, I don't feel it's that much difference. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the turns being so much sharper and all. And uh, it's a mile track, the same as, the other, as uh, Churchill Down. And if I'd like to measure from inside rail to inside rail right across, I don't think there's 10 feet difference. So I don't think there's that much difference around the turn. Now, Ronnie, um, you were last coming away from the gate. Your horse occasionally shows a habit of not breaking real sharply. Do you think in a small field of six like this that that's important? Well, I don't know. Uh, we have a long run down the stretch the first time around. Uh, you always want your horse to break good. He always breaks with his feel, and I just, I've been letting him uh, uh, pick it up on his own. Now, uh, your horse has, of course, been here in Baltimore and training for this race. Uh, he trained well in Louisville. How would you compare how he's coming to this race as to the Derby? Well, I feel he's trained better here for this race than he did in Louisville. So you expect him to do better than he did in Louisville? Well, if he can do as good, that's fine with me. <laughs> this is Ron Turcott. A big job, Ron. Have a happy journey. And now, here is Haywood Hale Brun. Well, as often is the case when you are dealing with reality, reality doesn't play as it should. The horses aren't here yet. You will see that there is a crowd almost as large as on the other side of the racetrack all around us. As Frank just pointed out rather oddly, the valets have arrived with the gear even before the horses have. The valets are those dedicated men who know everything, keep secrets, know just what kind of saddle, just what to do. They're here. Owners are here. Frank, uh, there is one horse uh, way in back of us somewhere, isn't there? Yes, Deadly Dream is here, Woody. He got here five or six minutes ago and seems to be handling the situation very well. This lateness may be a, a moment upset to us and, uh, in the broadcasting business, but the later they arrive, the better the trainers like it. As you know, Woody, sometimes they risk fine to get their train their charges here late. You that were, isn't the case today, but... You were talking to Deadly Dreams trainer Henry Worcester. I think you point out he'd been to a dozen racetracks. That's maybe why he isn't so nervous here. Here they are now in back of us, coming across the track and about to come in to us now are the contestants. Frank, can you, you have the keen eye. Who is this first one coming to us in back of us I over here? I can't see through the crowd, uh, Woody. I see. Now, the, here I see they he has rundown bandages, and I'll sure make note to discuss that <laughs> with his good trainer. He's a bay colt. It could very well be the great sham coming here. If it is... No, that's number no, five. No, that's no, Torsion, one of the long shots. Bay colt of Johnny Campos' charge. Going by. <laughs> And he's got, each of them has, as you see, a sort of huge yellow sponge which uh, carries out the black-eyed Susan, the black and yellow colors motif, which is part of the race. And now here is Sham is standing there, looking lovely. I think we should go over there. Now, uh, uh, do you know? Yes, here he is. And now I'll let Frank take over here and ask the expert questions if there are expert questions to be asked. Go ahead. Frank, Frank what can I do but compliment you? He's a fabulous looking horse, a perfect horse minus two teeth. Thank you. You Frank. showed me that this morning, the missing teeth. Do you think they'll bother him at all today? No, I don't think so. Well, it seems to have healed well. I hope not too, Frank. I wish you a speedy journey. 
He's doing too good to bother nothing. I don't think nothing's going to bother. He looks fabulous, Frank. All I'll four of those bandages will be removed. He runs in no bandage. No, I don't want no bandage at all. Just a deep bit and a cloth blanket. Mm -hmm. If, if someone will come and look at me here, I have a man who looks very calm. This is Sigmund Summer, who owns Sham, is perfectly calm, except for a faint beating of perspiration, which I guess your horse has to... At this point. Good luck to you, sir. Shall we... Now they are putting the saddle on Deadly Dream, the one who got here first. And that's trainer Henry Worcester behind over there, doing the saddling. And You'll I, notice here, Woody, that there's two girths put on a horse, a regular girth and an over girth for extra security on racehorses. And it's, of course, pulled tight now by trainer Henry Worcester on the near or left side of the horse. Uh, Henry told us last night that this horse uses a tongue tie. And if good cameraman Bob Dunn can get in here close, I think we'll get a chance to see him tie down the top. He's going to put his blinkers on first. These are the kind of semi-blinkers, are they? Well, well described, Woody. That's the semi-cup, opposed to the French or wide-open cup or the full cup that Sham runs in. This is what you might call mezza mezza blinker. I see. If we can linger here a minute, I think Henry's going to tie a tongue for us. There it is. Yeah. You'll notice it's about a 10 or 12-inch piece of cloth, and he wraps it around the tongue and ties the tongue to the bottom of the mouth. Preventing it from getting... That that's quite humane for anybody. Of course it is. It's, it's very soft and very... It's the hospital type of, uh, of cloth. And uh, what it does, actually, that's so humane, Woody, it prevents the bit from getting under the tongue to the equally tender part of the mouth as if you were have some steel under your tongue. Well, at this moment, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> I think we should probably now move on to Secretariat, who is surrounded by so many people that uh, we may have a little trouble bustling through. I do see his familiar blue and white colors there. And Lucian Lauren is in a brave red coat, having nothing to do with the colors, and now putting on his blinkers. He's putting semi-cups on, too. Frank, as soon as he finishes the, the important part yeah. here, perhaps you can engage Lucian for a moment or so. He looks a picture, doesn't he? Isn't he's his confirmation a, almost perfect? He's a very handsome horse. Very handsome what horse. What is his single flaw? I suppose that slope in his rump there, that goose rump defect from the point of his croup. But it's uh, being very picky unish to pick on such a magnificent looking animal, buddy. <laughs> Lucian, Lucian, congratulations the way he looks. Thank you very much. I wish you and I looked that well. He's a handsome horse. He's neither one of the horses. Oh, just fabulous. This is not bothering him much, just lively enough. Don't you think, this outdoor paddock? Yeah, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. I think it's better than the inside, even. And there's nowhere for a horse to get hurt. There's no in constricting steel or wood. I like it a lot, and I know you do. I do. I think it's a wonderful thing. It's, uh, like I said, it's nice and quiet, and you've got much more room out here, so I think they settle down a little more, you know? The best of luck to you, there. Thank you very much. Come here, I have Mrs. Tweedy here with me, the owner of secretary, and I have to ask you, those are sort of stable colors. Is this a lucky dress? Well, I don't know it's new. We're trying it on for size. And the, the gold pin, is that since the derby? No, the gold pin has been on me every time. This is my good luck piece. And do you have any kind of Pavlov reflex action feeling that this is a place where you were so unhappy last year and you might be unhappy again? No, I'm trying to think positively. The sun is out and my feelings are good and my husband's here if I can find him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll find him perhaps on the winning stand. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. I think Frank Wright has moved on to uh, our native and he's up here yes, and Bob, right. if you'll come with me, here we are. Where, Frank, if you're here, follow Listen. me. We are I'm coming scoring. now to sturdy Hi. our so native. Come He's along, Bob. Isn't he beautiful? They oh, deserve taking beautiful. your picture, Good Bill. Thank you very much. And Bill. Handsome horse, Bill. Thank he you. is a grand-looking animal. How are you? Frank, nice how are to see you, and the best of luck to you today. Thank you very much. Does he always use rundowns, Bill? <laughs> yes, he has the last couple of uh, times because... Uh, he ran down just a little bit in Florida, and we've just been putting on more as a precautionary. That was all. Just to prevent him from burning his back heels. That's correct. Sometimes when you come to these other racetracks where he's not used to, uh, Tracho Downs, we use them at Tracho Downs, and we also use them here today because it seems like it's a deeper racetrack than the Florida racetracks. We saw an exciting film earlier, Bill, of uh, the near accident in the, in the gate in Kentucky. He shows no ill effects. 
Well, we were fortunate enough that we didn't encounter any difficulties uh, out of that. The jockey's saddle was scraped up, and I guess we're just fortunate enough that the saddle was cut, not him. Well, good luck today. I hope Thank no re much. repetition. Good now luck to you. Behind me here, you'll see circling number five, which is Torsion, the, a, one of the long shots in the field, trained by Johnny Campo, but I think someone else is saddling him today. Frank is going over to talk to the young lady who is the official of the day for the stable. I have my Mikey Ryan here with me, and Mikey, you're the first lady to ever sa saddle a charge in a triple crown race, an <laughs> assistant trainer to John Campbell. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you feel that he has a chance to upset in here? I think so, because that's why John put him in. Well, if he does, I think Bobby Riggs will probably challenge you, <laughs> so you better be ready, and the very best of luck to you. I Thank you.